Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Odroid Retro Arena, Arena Conclave, Episode 2. I'm your host, Adrian Tower, also known in the community as Slappy McPhee. So we have some pretty big news today. We're going to be dropping our latest release, which is version 1.5.0. Um, that's going to be coming out by this evening on the 7th of October, 2018, for public release. Uh, some of the items of note on this build is that it is built up from version 1.1. That was a pretty successful build, so we just continued on with it, especially to streamline and speed up the process uh, since we spent a lot of time attempting to do version 2. Um, just a quick side note on that. There's been some confusion apparently in the community about version 2. When we say that it's tabled, it means that we put it over on the side and uh, we do have a beta build that we can go back to if we end up finding out that the uh, kernel issues have been resolved for Bluetooth and controllers and a few of the other items that uh, were causing it to not be as great of an experience as it should have been. Um, so that being said, um, it's built with RetroPie version 4.4.2, so that means that it also has bezel support. <clears throat> Excuse me, we had worked with uh, the guys over at the bezel project to ensure that the uh, code worked correctly for that. So we've got that going on. Um, CEC Utilities, uh, a basic package has now been installed. So that's good news for anybody that has a legacy display or even if it's a, a newer display that cannot automatically automatically disable CEC. Excuse me, let's say that 10 times fast. Uh, like my little monitor here, right? Um, that was manufactured less than a year and a half ago. However, it does not have that ability to disable that uh, functionality. So that means that uh, prior to the new version that's about to release, if you shut your display off or if you changed inputs, it could freeze the board. So um, in regards to advanced features, like for example, turning on your board and then having it also turn on your display, or uh, turning off your display and having it do anything along the lines of shutting down the board, etc. That's not supported. Um, however, you can do searches online to find out how to enable it. It actually somewhat does have to do with what you're connecting for a display. So um, it's something that's very difficult, uh, at least from our standpoint, to code in natively. Um, Cody is not upgraded, it's, uh, or excuse me, updated. It's still 17.3. In order to go to 17.6 or newer, you do have to have the version 4 kernel. We've already been down that road. The built-in scraper now functions properly. So that means that when you hit start and you have your start menu and that top scraper option, that does now work. We resolved that issue. Um, there's some oddball behavior we're seeing with the self-scraper as of late. However, we've identified that it's not specific to our build and that there are other members in the community otherwise that use self script utility on uh, other platforms that are seeing a little bit of difficulty and issue as well. So that being said, you know, just take that into consideration if you like to use it or if it's your uh, scraper of choice. Um, we do have on the build the actual standalone scraper application, which is uh, Skyscraper. So you might want to start investigating into using that uh, if you like doing scraping natively on the board. Um, we have now also as well a build version .text file, which has a summary of information that's also uh, similar to what you'll see in the release notes uh, for this iteration. So anything that we do along those lines will update the build version in that little text file on our base images that we release itself, and then um, you can kind of check that out if you want to actively on the build. Um, some people have been asking, can I, well, actually lock, right? Can I upgrade from version 1.1? Unfortunately, in this case, the answer is no. There's too many changes, and we did not have the capability on the team to be able to perform a lot of updating through the RetroPie setup script. We could do real basic stuff, but not like what we've uh, had to do with this build. So the good thing with that, though, is that moving forward, uh, it should be pretty much most everything will be able to be updated through the RetroPie setup script. So that's, that's some good news, exciting. Um, some other release tidbits is that uh, Drastic is natively installed. Um, the Yabasan Shiro emulator for Saturn is natively installed. 
uh, we want to say uh, a really big thank you out to the Patreons and then the members in the community that donated to pay a bounty to bring the developer on board and active with us. Um, without your help, there's no way it would have ever happened, and we're truly blessed. Um, some of the items of note for the emulator for Saturn is that uh, right up front to let you know, uh, multi-disc is currently a no-go. That's actually an emulator situation. The developer hopes to provide it in the future, but right now it's not something that's supported. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, custom controller GUI that he's built for us, so that will allow you to go in there and tweak your controller settings when you wish. And uh, you don't have to worry about manually editing any text files or anything of that nature. Um, the devs website uh, is something that we will share in the description so you can go ahead and check out any types of updates, um, get information on being able to go to his uh, GitHub and submit any issues, and then also look at compatibility because the compatibility list itself isn't uh, necessarily tied directly to the XU4 uh, or our build. It's actually a compatibility list for the emulator in general. And there's actually been some really cool developments with games becoming more playable or at least getting to the launching screen, etc. Uh, just in the last couple weeks alone, so that's really cool. Uh, the supported file structure is bin slash Q, just so you know. Uh, we've had a couple of the Patreon testers do uh, CHD, uh, I believe, um, or CCD. I can't remember exactly the file extension, but... Um, it's not something that the developer natively uh, supports, so just be aware of that. LR Recast is now installed, and it is uh, there to be able to run Dreamcast games, uh, also a Thomas Wave system and the Naomi system. Um, the LR Recast BIOS uh, needs to, excuse me, the LR Recast BIOS is uh, located in the BIOS slash DC subdirectory. And there's also a text file in there that tells you what you actually have to have for BIOSes and how to name them for Thomas Wave and Naomi to run correctly. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of 3DO improvements, so games like Road Rash and Gex will run a lot better. Uh, the LR4DO emulator itself has received some threaded um, enhancements for CPU processes, which is great because now we've got a lot more playability. Um, so some of the things that I also want to mention <clears throat> here real quick on a side note is like, um, once again, just, just remember that, uh, you know, your experience if you've used Raspberry Pi boards, um, is not going to necessarily be the same. There's going to be different things that users may consider to be bugs. Uh, however, it may not even be a bug at all. It very well just could be a functionality situation. Um, the uh, Raspbian uh, development has been going on now for several years, and so their support is very robust out there in the community, and um, the XU4 is still a budding platform. So just be aware of that. It uses um, a minimal uh, Ubuntu image that were provided by Hard Kernel. So um, that being said, you know, for example as well, that's why we're on the kernel 3.10 in the 3 train, and we can't necessarily go to 3.12. Uh, if users are out there that are savvy enough that want to try to recompile with uh, the 3.12 kernel, for example, they could do that, um, but it's not something that we will be supporting. However, if you do so and you want to provide some input to the community, we'd love to see it because that would be something that would be really cool and I'm sure there's different people out in the community that would be happy. So um, that's just something I want to kind of mention on a side note. Um, obviously, uh, we have a few more emulators in here. We've got the Sharp X1, which was recently added. That's the predecessor to the X68000. Um, and then uh, PC88 and 98 have been added. Uh, we've got a little bit of tweaks in there for PC98 to uh, have smoother graphics and to have better performance. So that's uh, kind of cool. If you're interested in that system or the PC-88, just be aware that sometimes actually per game you might have to go in there and make some tweaks um, in regards to how the CPU multiplier works, etc. Some games can be a little bit thinny. Um, the N64 case is now fully supported uh, with one exception, and that is the programmable <coughs> user button. Um, you can go to the Hard Kernel website, um, excuse me, uh, or to the hard kernel forums, 
And there has been some pretty cool developments that have gone on with the case, being able to use that programmable button for different things. Uh, with our built-in art pack, it'll have an animated GIF that will run with our logo at boot up. And then um, there's a folder called OGST in the RetroPie menu. And, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit dry. Um, in that, um, where were we at? Late Dawns on Marblehead. N64 case, OGST packs. Yeah, that's right. So we have a static image that's displayed for each system uh, when the emulator starts. And one of the things we've been kicking the tires on is actually doing something similar with um, the ES themes with the RetroPie community and having um, the ability for uh, people out in the community to provide uh, art packs or gift packs for the screen. Reason why I keep saying gift packs is that active video um, it's something that you need to be aware of the fact that it does use uh, plenty of CPU. Uh, we notice about an 18 to 22 percent hit on uh, one of the CPU cores, and so when you, especially you get into the more demanding emulators, you will notice a performance difference, and uh, your performance will decrease. So that's the reason why we stuck with static images. Um, we had some uh, melding of the minds here uh, in our team. We know that it took a long time. We apologize for the delay. Um, and uh, we also ended up having some community support. We had a uh, member of the Discord, uh, Keg. He's also on uh, Facebook as well. Very knowledgeable uh, gentleman, and we would want to send out a heartfelt thanks to him because he helped push uh, the development for that screen and support uh, as well. So I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I didn't want to make this too, too long today. Um, because I do need to get this uh, image wrapped up to get ready to put out to the public. So uh, if you're watching this this afternoon, it's currently 3 o'clock central time in the United States. Uh, look forward in the next four to six hours for the link to go and be announced uh, public. Thanks again, guys. As always, we appreciate the community. Uh, we appreciate your support. And, of course, we also appreciate our Patreons. Thanks and have a good day.